someone sent me this story this week and I was absolutely horrified by it. And I want you to appreciate the courage it took for this guy to speak out. So there was a, a guy named Ronald Ecker. He is from Wisconsin. He likes riding bikes. And recently he suffered injuries to his neck to the point where he thought he was going to die. And why? Because he was cycling down a hill. And if this is disturbing, forward a few seconds. But he was biking down a hill and he basically ran into a wire that was hanging loose from like a telephone pole. He like ran into a wire. It wrapped around his neck as he was biking downhill. He's lucky that nothing more serious happened, right? And in the article about this in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, this guy actually allowed them to take pictures. And you could see just some of the injuries to the front of his neck. It's really disturbing stuff. Um, and it gets even more serious when you look on the side of his neck. Uh, in the article, he actually says... Uh, I wanted to share this with you somewhere he, that he thought he was going to be decapitated at first. He didn't know how serious this wire was or what was going on. It just thankfully stopped at some point. So what happened? How did he get injured here? Well, in order to understand what happened to this guy, you have to understand this thing right here. And it's called an Aruv. All right. And if you've never heard of this, you should Google it. Because basically, what an Eruv is, is that under Jewish law, on the Sabbath, like from Friday night to Saturday night, you are not supposed to carry, if you are an Orthodox Jew, you're not supposed to carry any of your possessions between a private area, private space, like your home, to a public space, like outside your home. God says that's bad. So what happens if you want to take your baby to synagogue on Friday night? can't do it because then that you would have to step outside your house. What happens if you want to just, you forgot something in your car, you want to take your keys, go outside where your car is parked. You can't do it because that means you're stepping outside your home. Jewish law forbids it. But Orthodox Jews figured out a theological loophole. What if we wrap a giant string around the entire city and we just say, ooga booga, this is all private space inside the string, then it doesn't matter when, what time of day it is because you're always walking in a private domain because the string is wrapped around the whole city, right? You can just turn your public domain into a larger private domain. It's magic. That's an air roof. It's the string you put around the city. It's like a gated community that you put high up in the air using poles and strings. If you put the poles up around the city and you connect them with the piece of string, voila, you've created a brand new giant private domain. So Orthodox Jews can roam and carry items freely within that space, even on the Sabbath. Now, obvious question, doesn't God see through your little trick here? Doesn't God understand what you're doing? And the answer is shut up. Don't tell God what's going on here. How dare you? These people found a way to trick God, and they will have none of your criticism. So the thing is, in certain areas, in Milwaukee County, for example, local officials basically spoke with the Orthodox Jewish community in that location and said, because the Orthodox Jews came and said, can we wrap this string around our community? And they need to use, like, what's a very high stick that you could put around the city? Well, sometimes the only option is, like, telephone poles that are already there. But if you want to put string around those poles and, you know, you want to tell those city officials, we don't want to interfere with electricity, power lines, or anything like that, but can we do this? We have religious reasons for doing it. We're not interfering with anything. Can we do? The local officials are like, yeah. That's fine. If you have a good reason for this and you're citizens in our community, we don't see the harm in saying yes to you. And in fact, according to the rabbi who runs the local synagogue, he said, uh, we put these things up around Milwaukee County. We inspect them every week. I think like every Thursday, they hire somebody to go check the wires around the county, make sure they're still in place and ready to go for Friday night. And everything is fine. 
And whatever happened, I don't know what happened last month, but an air roof that was attached to a light pole got detached at one end. So instead of the wire hanging in the air, you can try to picture in your head, here's the telephone pole, here is the ground, and like here, can't do this on backwards on my screen, but you can imagine like there's the air roof attached to the pole and it hit the ground and it formed like a right triangle right there. And no one knew it happened because the maintenance had already been completed and no one could really see the wire because it's relatively thin. And depending on the weather, it might even be harder to see the air roof that had been detached, right? So that is what this bicyclist ran into when he was biking downhill, okay? And that's where it gets really disturbing. And let me show you in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel what happened here. Uh, Ecker said he was riding his electric bike down a hill, dot, 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 when a wire snagged around his neck. It was attached on one end to a light post and had detached from another anchor on the other side of the four-lane road. So it's a big wire. So when he ran into it, the entire roughly 60 feet of wire skated across his neck, he said, leaving marks on the front side, back of his neck. You could see that in the picture right there. It happened so fast you couldn't really see it because it's so thin, Ecker said. Quite frankly, I thought I was going to be decapitated. And again, that is absolutely horrific. I will say the rabbi who's in charge of all this, he apologized to this dude, but it's not like he said, you know what, we're going to remove the wires. No, uh, because for some people, religious mythology always overrides other people's safety. But he did say the wires would definitely get fixed because, you know, the alternative would be having a broken air roof and you can't have that then, can you? What will the Orthodox Jewish residents do if they don't have this magical fake fence around the community. And the weird thing is, like, even if everyone agrees that Eruvs are symbolic, even if the Orthodox community takes it seriously, I don't understand why the wires need to be so damn thick to the point that if you look at them, they look like many threads of wire wrapped around each other, like a cable, like an internet cable or something. I don't know why they're that thick. Why not use something softer and less hazardous if they are meant to be untouched and temporary. Like, I get you might need something strong enough to withstand bad weather. I don't know why they need to be as thick and sturdy as they are. Like, if it just find kite string and wrap it around every Thursday or something. Stop putting up big wires that could hurt people if they break. So anyway, local officials in Milwaukee County have said, we're going to allow the air roofs to stay up for now. For now. Because I think in their minds, it's still a small ask that still, you know, is important to a small segment of the community. But that might change as a result of this injury. And this is something that they asked the rabbi about. Uh, Since the land where Ecker was injured is managed by Milwaukee County, the rabbi said county attorneys are determining whether a wire over the road poses too much of a liability. If it does, and they ask him to move it, he will, he said. We will definitely make any effort to mitigate any of those possibilities for injury. And look, I appreciate that he said that. That's a good thing. But what the hell are we waiting for? Someone got injured. How do we mitigate the possibility of injury? Remove the damn wires. That's how you do it. It's not that complicated. And if the county decides it's a problem, I don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to move the air roof to a different space where it's not in anyone's way? I don't know. I think it's absurd we're even having this discussion at all because I don't know why any religious group has the ability to use public utilities, light poles and whatnot, um, for their own religious mythology. Do other groups have the same kind of permission? I have no idea. Now, everything I'm telling you, let me try to play devil's advocate to myself here. Are there reasons they should allow the air roofs to stay up? Let me give you some arguments to answer yes. First of all, they make life for Orthodox Jews easier, especially women, because it gives them a way to function on the Sabbath without violating their religious beliefs. And if we can make life easier for people, regardless of their delusions, like if it's not that big of an ask, I don't see what the big harm is, right? Near decapitation aside. And sometimes also the people who want to take down air roofs 
have anti-Semitic sentiments. Like if we get rid of the Arabs, maybe the Jews will leave. And obviously that's not something I support. I want religious freedom. I don't, if this is a bigoted thing to take them down, I don't want to be part of that. There's also the argument that usually these wires don't hurt anybody. Like no one in the community even knew these Arabs were there until a dude got seriously injured. But that only assumes they're out of the way and not hurting anybody. And they couldn't make it happen in this case. I would also say that unlike a Ten Commandments monument outside a courthouse, these air roofs are another religious symbol, but it's not like they're saying if you don't believe our religion, you're going to hell <laughs> or anything like that. It doesn't suggest people who don't agree with us are wrong or immoral. It's something they are doing for their own community. And if you don't want to believe what the air roof stands for, if you don't want to respect it, they don't care. They're not asking you to. Like most people don't know they're there. So there are reasons to be like, this is not that big of a deal. In fact, maybe, I don't know how many of you know this, there are maps of Manhattan where there's a huge Orthodox Jewish community. And I'm showing you this. This is real. This is a live map that still exists of the air roof that is circling all of Manhattan. It's massive. It goes around so much of the island. It is huge. And they do the same thing that they were doing in Milwaukee County. They inspect this thing every week before it's the Sabbath. And according to an NPR article about this, check this out. This is from 2019. They say it costs between $125,000 and $150,000 a year to maintain that air roof around Manhattan. And the rabbi there raises the funds every year from synagogues and private donations. Now, for those of you who have visited New York, did you know it was there? I'm assuming no, because that's how it should be. It should be out of sight, out of mind for everybody else. But again, a dude got injured. And I do wonder, like, is this a stepping stone to more egregious church-state separation violations? Like, it should be irrelevant that the string goes unnoticed because ultimately a religious group is still getting a special privilege, and I don't love that. And in this case, someone was injured because of it, and I definitely don't love that. Like there should be that should be more than enough reason for the county to say we cannot participate in this charade. Because if the boundaries formed by the air roof are imaginary, why can't the wires be imaginary too? Okay. I'm gonna stop there for a bit. What questions we got here before I get to the last story? As a New Yorker, yep, there's a ton of religious laws and they jump through so many hoops to go around them, it's insane. Why have the law? Is your all-powerful God going to say, ah, you got me? You know, there was a story I think I covered last year about how Orthodox Jewish schools were not teaching kids the bare minimum, like when it came to math or reading or anything like that. And these kids, boys, were graduating from these schools and having no ability to read or write or add, which makes it impossible to really leave the organization, leave the religious sect because you have no skills out in the real world. And the problem with that is that some of those schools were getting taxpayer dollars, like, what was it, like $100 million plus dollars for lunch, reduced lunch, things like that. And the thing is, New York city officials were, there was an open question of whether they would do anything about this because politically, they do not want to piss off the Orthodox Jews. They want their votes. It's a powerful voting block. And so, yeah, there are lots of, especially in New York, it's they have so many religious loopholes that they allow that community in particular to go through. And politicians are afraid to touch it because they don't want to upset a very powerful voting block. They ask themselves, how can we work harder to get around the rules than we would have to work to change the rules? Yeah, I mean, if your religious belief says you can't leave on the Sabbath, maybe don't leave on the Sabbath. Either you obey that rule or you say, yeah, screw to hell with religion. But I don't get the loophole thing. Uh, and they're not the only religion that has loopholes about things like this. We all know what, you know, kids who go to Christian Bible summer camp do in their cabins. There are loopholes for everything. There's a song by Garfunkel and Oates called The Loophole. It's great. But I'm just saying, if you don't want to abide by the religious rules, you don't have to. I swear, if you're an adult, you don't have to. 
Uh, it's actually illegal to post anything on a utility pole. That is true. However, in some communities, they as long as the and my understanding is if the community gives you the exception, if the officials there say it's okay for you to do something with their permission, then you're able to do it. So I don't know specifically what the deal is between the county in Milwaukee and this community, but they are using city property, to, uh, county property to do this. So I don't know what the deal is. I figured you'd like this. I'm sitting in the library and my headphones disconnected and you blared out. Oh no. This guy next to me asked who you were and I told him he said, there are no friendly atheists. I hate to tell you this. The guy sitting next to you in the library is correct. I am an asshole. Sorry, he got you there, Sean. I do have a question that I'd like him to answer. Do you talk about any other news stories that are important but have no religious significance? Usually, no. Because on these live streams, I just kind of stay in my lane and talk about this stuff. I have very strong opinions on very stupid things. You want to talk about this season of Survivor? All for it. I have big opinions on it. But usually, uh, as my family likes to tell me, like, you talk about religion with your internet friends, and then just don't talk about anything else with them about anything, because no one wants to hear what I have to say. It's all good. Um, but no, I just talk about stuff that has church-state separation or atheist significance that I think would be interesting to discuss. And uh, that's it. I don't know. Maybe if enough people donate, I'll create a second live stream where I tell you all my thoughts about Robert Caro and Survivor and <laughs> things like that.